Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webcast. My name is Brooke Bacon, Business Development Manager at GSI, and I'm very pleased to welcome our main pre presenter, Jennifer Sansky. Now, before we get started, I wanted to give you a chance to review our Safe Harbor Statement. And now for a quick overview of today's meeting, which will last about 35 to 40 minutes, we will go over a couple of housekeeping items as well as provide a brief company overview. And then I will turn it over to Jen for our main presentation, which will last about 35 to 40 minutes. And then we will go over, up some, over some of our upcoming educational events. And then we will wrap up with a 10 minute question and answer session. So if you'd like to submit a question, you can do so through the question panel at the bottom of the GoToWebinar console window located on the right side of your screen. Please note that all questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. So if you'd like to minimize your console during the presentation, click the left facing arrow, or I'm sorry, the right facing arrow key on the top left of the console. Clicking the left arrow key will return the console so that you can input your questions. And now I'd like to give you a brief overview of GSI. We were established in 2004, and GSI is a full service ERP consulting organization. We are an Oracle Platinum partner that was founded in 2004 and has now has over 100 employees. We have offices nationwide and, it's rec and we are recognized in the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing companies in the US. We also specialize in project consulting, managed services, as well as cloud and hosting services with all of our service, services backed with a 100% guarantee. And in addition, we are a product development company that has many popular products, including Genius, which is our advanced monitoring and performance ana analytics solution for any business critical system on any platform, Genesis, which is a load and stress testing application for system design, validation, or expansion for any web-based business critical system. G-Shield, which is our comprehensive security solution. Rapid Reconciler, which is our comprehensive inventory reconciliation solution. And then we also have Rapid Approval, which is our, our workflow approval tool. And that is all for me. So I would like to turn things now over to Jen for our main presentation. Thank you so much, Brooke. No and good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And pull up the PowerPoint to start. Don't worry, everyone. We will not be in this long. Okay, so as Brooke mentioned, I am Jennifer Stansky and will be presenting the webinar and demo on NetSuite's financial reports today. I'd like to begin by speaking briefly about NetSuite overall, and then we'll just dive right into the demo. So just a little bit about NetSuite. It is a fully integrated cloud ERP solution that gives real-time visibility across your entire business. It allows companies to store all of their business processes in one location, and with the relationship database structure, it allows views of the overall process with easily generated dashboards, reports, and searches. Because it is cloud, it saves the hassle of maintenance and integration, and it also easily and quickly is accessible from any browser. It was founded in 1998, it was the first cloud ERP solution, which means it's been around for a while and it's had plenty of time to work out those kinks. NetSuite is a single data source, so as a company, there is one software to house all aspects of your business, and that obviously makes analytics easier. Less software also means less upkeep, less integration, and less to troubleshoot. NetSuite is configurable and highly customizable, but not in the scary term, to ensure that it fits your business needs right down to even the terminology. It is a SaaS model, that is the SaaS as a service model, hosted over the internet, and again, meaning you can log in from anywhere. Again, that relational database structure incorporates unique tables and then defines these tables with unique lines of information that relates them together by their related fields. And this also results in more efficient data storage resources. 
The forms in NetSuite are, again, customizable. It is simple to create new fields, lists, and subtabs. It relates them throughout the system and organizes them on forms in a way that works for your business. So this means that NetSuite allows you to input on customizable forms what matters to you. And the analytics are then available to run on any information that is input, and it is very simple. So we're about to jump on into the demo environment now. Um, just, just so you know, we do have an upcoming webinar on some financial processes. That will go more into the processes themselves as opposed to the reports and dashboards. And if you look out for that NetSuite financial processes, um, the next demo you will see journal entries, amortizations, and allocations, as well as budgets covered there. But I'm gonna go ahead now and jump into our system. And what I've done is logged into Gill, which is a demo environment, as a CFO role. So I'm gonna try and make the screen a little bit larger so everyone can see it. And we're just gonna start by first reviewing the dashboard and dashlets uh, or port lists, and then we will go on into some of the reports themselves. We will look at the standard ways to configure the reports, and then we'll also, um, towards our budget versus actual report, look at some of the ways to customize these financial reports. Okay, so as we are logged into our CFO role and we look over to our left, you're gonna see that reminders dashlet. The reminders can be set up for multiple things. Um, in this particular role, all you have to do, by the way, to set that up is scroll over your little hamburger icon over here to the right, top right of any of these portlets and click on Setup. This allows you to quickly just click on these right-facing arrows on the left-hand side, or you can drag anything that you want to be reminded on. You can also choose to show your reminders with zero results. Once you've done that, anything that has a blue underline or is just in blue writing without within the system, is a quick link. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the invoices overdue. By clicking this directly from my reminders, that is gonna pull up all of the invoices in my system that are overdue right now. And this is an open invoices report. Going back to our homepage, we are gonna look at down below here, another great tool for anyone in a finance role to use, key performance indicators. These are set up specific to what you'd like to see in your role and what you have access to, obviously. The KPIs in this situation or in this circumstance are set up for income, expenses, receivables, cost of goods, payables, and profit. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you have those blue links. When I scroll over them, you'll see the underline. Again, this will take me directly into those results. So those quick links are a great way to easily access any of this information in further detail. Now I wanna go over to our right a little bit here. We're gonna look at something called the navigation portlet. The navigation portlet is something that allows quick links to all of your reports that are related to this role. So we have links right here to our financial statements, revenue, banking, budgeting, et cetera, et cetera. As we uh, look at our profit and loss, we'll go ahead and pull this one up. A couple quick things. I'm sure this is information you may already know, but within your reports, you will always have a link up here to view detail. If you're in the detail view, you can click it to view the summary view. Down here at the bottom, we have our links to our periods. When you pull these up, you can use your quick filters here, period, quarter, or year. You can also select a custom filter, or you can choose from any of the filters that are already set up. This is a quick way to be able to change the date range on any of your reports. You can also use your from and to on your accounting period. You can change your subsidiaries quickly to just look at one subsidiary in particular. And on your column view, you can choose to look at totals by class, department, location, accounting period, or however you happen to set this up. So that's a great way to really narrow down those results without having to generate an entire new report. 
Down at the bottom, we're going to go over these icons as well. When I click on this gear, I have again a way to view my report in a grid or in a regular format. I can also show my drill downs. I've got that selected or choose to not show them and displaying the title. Beside that, I have a quick link to collapse any of the fields in my report. So when I click on that, you'll see it quickly collapse. The icon next to it is expand. So we got a quick expand there as well. You can graph anything within this report by clicking on your graph icon. You can also change your parameters, the type, and the results that you show. And you can export any of these reports to Excel, PDF, CSV, Microsoft Word. You can also use the print functionality, of course. You can email this report, and you can also schedule this report to run. As well, you do have a quick find here, which allows you on the larger reports, especially in that expanded view, to quickly search for any particular results. Again, please do note as we go into each of the, re the reports that these are all options that you have. And we will go into the customizing those reports in just a few minutes as well. So we're going to jump out of here, go back to our navigation portlet. And now we're going to go ahead and look at our balance sheet. Again, right here under financial statements, these quick links are very helpful to navigate quickly. Please again notice those same functionalities and your ability to expand and collapse. Let's go ahead now and just um, look at a few more quick reports and then we'll jump into customizing. We'll scroll down back into our navigation portlet and go into our cash flows. So the cash flow statement report shows how your company's cash position has changed over a period of time. You can assess your company's current financial position and set your future goals here. This report is also useful for investment and credit decisions. And it includes activities that affect cash balance during the selected time period. So it includes uh, operating, investing, and financing activities. And operating activities begin with net income amount referenced from the income statement. And they include adjustments for changes in account balances that affect available cash. Amounts for all of the activities are summed up or are summed to arrive at a net change in cash for that period. Heading back to the home page, let's now go in and look at how to customize these even further. So we're going to go into our navigation portlet again. As you can see, these quick links are very helpful again. And we will go into budgets versus actuals over under banking and budgeting. So down here at the bottom, we'll leave all of our settings as they are right now and click on customize. This is going to be the standard of what you see when you customize a financial report. I want to throw it out there that any time you are getting ready to customize a financial report, please find, navigate through and find the financial report that is most similar to what you want to do. Um, that way you don't have to customize as much. You don't have to add as many fields or, um, or bring in as many formulas. So as much of that foundational information that is native to a financial report, uh, you can find that's, that's the best way to, to go through and do that. And then you can quickly add in just the missing information you have. So the first thing that we would do is come up here and name this. I'm just going to say Jen's budget versus actual. The next thing I want to show you over to your left, by the way, note that we are, note that we are on the edit layout tab. Under our layout on the edit layout tab, we can add a row or a section, headers and summary rows, financial sections, formula rows. Yes, those formula rows are very uh, similar to something you would see in Excel. Formulas in there or text rows. So if you think back about this report we just looked at with the budget versus actuals, let's go ahead and actually preview it right now. You'll notice that if I needed another header row in here somewhere, or I wanted to break this up in a different way, this is how I would do that. Heading back to our layout, 
we'll go ahead and look at adding a financial section. So I want to add an entirely new financial section to my budget report. I clicked on that option here, and it's going to pop up with how I'd like to insert the row. I can use an existing shared selection or create a new one. I'm going to go ahead and add my accounts receivable here. Once I've done that, over to my right is all the information referencing that section. So I can rename this. If I need to total something up and I want to label that something different, I can do that. The child of will allow me to place this under my ordinary income or my other income. I can choose what the default setting is. Is that going to default to expanded or collapsed, or will I not be able to expand it? Don't worry, this setting can obviously be changed as we saw before, so this is just what it defaults to. You can group by account or any of the other fields that you have selected in here. And you can group it again if you want to within that. So once we've added that, and again, you can add so many options in here um, over to your left. So I'll walk you through one more real quick. Now we save this. and we'll go back in to return to our customization. You can see at the top, accounts receivable was there. So I wanted to add something else in, a formula row per se. I can do that just by clicking on the formula row. Again, note the same thing happens. Over to our right, we have all of that information popping up. We can place it where we want to with our child of, format it how we want. And down here, you're gonna see the same kind of uh, form formulas that are provided in Excel. So you would have your sum or your divided by, your percentage, and you would simply select those operators and type out your qualifications there for the formula. You can always preview again, but right now we're just going to go ahead and move to our second tab, which is edit columns. Under the edit columns, this is all the columns on your report. So the, what we just saw with our layout was everything available over to our left. The columns are going across the top, just like columns in a spreadsheet. Right now, what we have standard in this report is our financial row off to our left that we just decided and um, formatted. We have our amounts as our next column, budget amount, amount over budget, and percent. These, again, are defaulted in. To add more fields, just like in the last one, I can just select any of the related information by hitting the plus sign, so I can select anything for my budget, financials, or budget and financials. I would just simply click on it to add it to our left. Now, obviously, we already have an amount column, but that's how easy it is to add it. If I wanted to revise my column label or any of the formatting within it, it's done down here. This column must be in green in order to, to edit that. As you can see, if I do the budget, I have the same thing. To remove it, you can simply click on remove and move left and right. You can just use those selectors as well. If I wanted to group this within something, simply click on the group with previous column. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that for now and show you about a formula row as well. So up here at the top on our left-hand side under edit columns, again, I can add a formula. So if there was another percentage that I, I wanted to work out over here on the right, I would just click on that Add a Formula column. It's going to give me a blank formula column. And scrolling down, any of the, I have to actually have the parameters or the, the numbers that I want to use within that formula have to be a part of this report. So they will not show up as an option for me down here if they're not up here in the report. What it will do is allow me to, we'll just do this for example, sum up, anything that is in the report. So you can see here that it's giving me two options, the amount column and the budget amount. So I can sum these two up if I wanted. Obviously, it makes no sense to do that. Maybe I would do a subtracting the, the amount from the budget. But these are all options within this report under your edit column. Next thing I'll do is select my filters. 
And these are the parameters that you can set to make this very specific, maybe to a subsidiary that you'd like, a class, department, or location. And you'd simply do that by, again, adding your field that you'd like to consider over here from the left on Add Field. And we'll just put a counting period in for now. And then you can see what happens. It automatically adds it here to your left. And under the value column, when I click on the down arrow, I can select equal, not equal, empty, or children of. I'll leave it at equal to. When I hit this double arrow down, it's going to pull up all the fields that I can select that it's equal to. Again, I would just click on that green arrow to select it. Hit done. And this new filter is now added to my report. Going over to our sorting options, very, very simple. I can sort any of my content, again, from the field that I select by ascending or descending. For it to be ascending, do not check that box. Descending, check that box. And the last part of our report customizations and financial reports is our options. So our additional options allows us to do some formatting here, um, show when there is zeros. Sometimes you just don't want that in there at all. You have your default, again, expand levels, your drill down to what report. So this is where you'd select what report you wanted to drill down into. And then, of course, your audience. So by group, role, department, employee, or even partner. And the audit trail. The audit trail will give you all of the changes that have been made on this report. And of course, by who. So now that we've done that, we would click Save. going to prompt me and say, are you sure you want to overwrite that? Since we already saved it once, I said yes. And again, we can see over here that had we actually written the formula here, we would have our new formula row, our accounts receivable. And I'm sure you're all already thinking what you could have done to make this prettier. So my suggestion again is go into your financial reports that are standard. Pick one and just kind of play around with all that functionality. You can really add a lot of uh, value into these reports by not doing but so much. Okay, so we're going to go back to our navigation portlet now and just talk about a couple of the other portlets that we can add. And I'm just going to cover this in case nobody or people aren't familiar. In order to add any portlets here, you just click on your personalize up at the top. You do have the ability to add your calendars, lists. If you just want to see a list of certain items, KPI meters. We'll look at those in a second. Custom portlets for scripting. Quick ad forms. Custom searches. And tasks. We also have a report snapshot that you can do a quick add on. Trend graphs. Any suite apps that are currently installed in your system that you'd like to add. And of course, you're currently used as just a list of all the portlets you have currently in use. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a report snapshot. We just click on the plus button, and you're going to notice that over on our left-hand side it pops up. Of course, we can drag and drop that wherever we like. And under our parameters, we're going to go to Setup. Again, that hamburger button. Click on Setup. Under the snapshot field, we can select any area or report that we would like to see a snapshot of. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and select inventory sales. We can choose our chart type, line, bar, column, pie, our date range. We can have this month, last month, or any of these parameters. And you can see here you have a lot to look through. So you should have something in there that, that, that fits your situation. Um, how many? I don't recommend going above, well, 50 on here, but I, I recommend keeping it at 10 or 15. That way you can really see um, a smaller portlet. You can scroll down and navigate to different pages through it. There is, it's going to take up a lot of space the more lines you show here. So I would keep that minimal. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. And you can see over here, 
my inventory revenue summary. I can also do a quick change to any other type of bar or pie graph I want. And I can quickly change the time frame. I have the same options here that I had when we were setting it up. So just because you select one thing in setup does not mean you're stuck on that from your portlet. All right, now I'm gonna go up and add a trend graph. Again, I'm gonna do that by clicking on the plus sign and then again to our hamburger button and clicking on setup. So we'll select our default chart type and the KPI. KPIs are based on saved searches within the system. So we're gonna go ahead and select one of those that we wanna use. We'll do total sales. Again, the kind of trends we want to see over a weekly average, and we'll do the moving average. And click Save. Again, you can quickly revise the type of chart and the time period here as well. Okay, so the only other thing I think that we need to touch on is um let's see down here we've got our kpi meters these again are set up as the ability to switch over any place you want and again our setup is the same but on a kpi meter we get to choose the range and then we also get to determine what we want to highlight and the criteria we can also set thresholds we can have only things that show up at a certain threshold. Our comparative range also allows us to get a quick idea of where it stands versus other measurements in the system or other time frames. So your KPI meter is a great way to look at those saved searches overall and tally up exactly what you want to see for your analytics. Okay, so I hope this was helpful today and I look forward to any questions. I am going to turn it back over to Brooke. And thank you guys so much. Thank you, Denny. All right. So um, now I'd like to cover a few follow-up items. And then we will move on to our question and answer se section of our webcast. Our webcast today is a part of GSI's free ongoing educational webcast series. And our upcoming webcasts are listed on the screen. And if you'd like to register for any of these free educational webcasts, go out to our website at getgsi.com. If you'd like to sign up for our weekly emails on upcoming webcasts, our monthly newsletter, or our monthly newsletter, you can go to getgsi.com. Just go to the bottom of the screen and click on the link for each. And it looks like we have a few questions here, Jenny. Let me pull that up. Okay, so we have our question here from Sherry. And let's see here. Okay, so it says on the KPI meter, when I click um, setup, all I get uh, all I get is sales and forecast. Um, let's see. How can this be changed? I, sh I saw she had expenses. So um, again, those KPIs are all set up on standard searches. There's two things that, without looking at your system, that go through my mind right now. Uh, one is the security and your roles. So the first thing I would do to troubleshoot that is go into uh, your role and make sure you have access to any of the searches that are standard in the system like expenses. If you do, in your role, have access to that, the next thing I would do is um, perhaps set up your own saved search based on those expenses, and then you can have your KPI read off of that saved search. So again, I do think it does sound, if you're only seeing um, certain options, like sales and forecast, you might need that permission added to your role. Otherwise, if you set up your own saved search that you have access to, you can quickly add that to your meter. Okay, great. Thanks, Jenny. Um, and while 
I wanted just to let you know too, if you do have any questions, you still can submit them on the bottom right of your console. And other than that, I think, and Sherry says, thank you. <laughs> no problem. All right, so that appears to be the end of our questions. Thank you so much, Jennifer, and everyone for your questions today. And as a follow-up from today's webcast, we, we ask that you could complete a short one-minute survey when you exit, and you'll be receiving an email with a link to our resource center on our website where you can access the recording from today's webcast as well as a copy of the presentation. And after today's webcast, we will do the drawing for the $25 Amazon gift card. Anyone that attended the entire webcast and completes the survey, that's the key, you have to complete the survey to be eligible and we will notify the winner. Well, thank you all again so much for attending our presentation and thank you so much, Jennifer, for the presentation. And we hope that you have a great day. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, Brooke. Bye.